All right. So if we think about you know some other aspects that come into uh, part of this role, right? We'll stay at the highlight of yellow for a little bit, and we'll change. There's also some uh, you know features of police work. So we think about you know like we think about what or the actions are, right? But there are also some like realities to like what you have to do as like an officer, right? So the first part is, is that, you know, you have a regular shift work. And what I mean by that is that unlike, say, a conventional, you know, nine to five, right, you know, the police are 24 seven. So, you know, they have to answer like on the weekends, they have to answer on holidays, they have to answer at 11 at night, two in the morning, and then also, uh, you know, like 10 a.m., right? So there's always going to be a shift, right? So you have a regular shift, you know, kind of weak kind of stuff, right? So you also, you know, when you have to think about like holidays, um, depending on where you are, right? You know, most, you know, if you have normal shift work, right? Usually it's uh, easy to say, okay, my shift ends at seven and then I'll be home, right? But you also have a lot of times, right? Like unpredictable, um, you know, end of shift. So, because if you did an arrest of someone or you're engaged in an encounter with someone, right, you know, you really can't just, like, stop the call. Um, and, you know, depending on what the event is, right, you know, it's pretty it's pretty routine for uh, people to say, like, okay, well, you own this call. You can't, like, go home uh, until it's done, right? Uh, there was, like, an officer I knew, uh, uh, Valerie, um, who would say that, you know, she was on a call. It was near the end of her shift. And, you know, she was supposed to go home, um, but then, uh, you know, she ended up working, like, an extra, like, 10 hours because she had to deal with, like, the call because she was the responding officer to that incident, right? So things like that can happen um, as well, right? So this regular shift work, you have to work the holidays. You, it's unpredictable, like, when do you uh, get in, right, and then out, um, stuff kind of like that, right? So these are, like, some common, like, things that make, uh, that may make, you know, a job unattractive. Now, why is that? You know, I mean, because there are certainly, like, men who do that, right? I mean, policing is mostly men, right? And that, so maybe it's seen as more of a male-dominated thing. But we also have to consider that, you know, women um, are typically going to be expected um, to have more child care responsibilities. That doesn't mean it's right, and it doesn't mean it should be like that, but from a stereotypical gender pattern, right, in society, right, this is sort of the norm that we have that, right? So what ends up happening, right, so because of this, right, there is this, you know, ec cultural expectation. Again, doesn't mean that this is correct um, or that it should be this way or that it shouldn't change, but there is this cultural expectation, right, that, you know, like, you know, kids you know, our, you know, women's work along with, uh, like, other household duties, household duties. So what ends up happening, right, is that because of this dynamic, right, if I'm someone who's expected to be at home and I have to take care of, uh, you know, my kids and things like that, where I'm expected to have more of these household duties, right? You know, it makes, um, especially if you consider, right, you know, a lot of times, right, you know, if it's someone like a mom, right, um, there is this expectation, fair or unfair, that moms uh, need to, like, need to work days and be available on the weekends for the kids, right? On day shifts, And, you know, have weekends free. So if this is like the nature and the reality of work, of police life, right? You know, when you're having to negotiate between being a police officer and then, you know, if you want to raise a family or have children, 
right? You have to balance a lot between these social expectations that are probably are a lot of times like unfair and reasonable, and they're certainly not assessed towards men. But um, you know, but can you imagine if like you know there was a, a pattern like in a police department where you know women got only had conventional nine to fives, right? You know, at that relative to men, right? That's an easy way to get a gender discrimination lawsuit, right? So what ends up happening a lot of times, like in, uh, you know, like for a female police officer, right, is that, you know, let's say they choose to have children. You know, this puts a big strain on a policing career and, you know, depending on what the career, career is, right, it could be a lot of different other ones, right? Because then, you know, because you, you know, it's a huge major life event that has like an incredible amount of strain uh, and reimagines like bodies. Right? I don't know. I'm a dude. My sister's told me about it. Sounds like awful. Um, choose to have children, right? You know, it's this major life event. And a lot of police departments don't have great, uh, you know, maternity policies, right? So they have or weak maternity uh, po policies. And what ends up happening a lot um, related to it, right, is that if you have this weak maternity kind of policy coming in, you know, some people uh, leave on maternity but then never come back. You know, I think that happens a lot with school teachers as well. I'm sure that happens for some other discipline as well, right? On maternity and never come back. So this creates a problem then from a policing standpoint, if you think about like forced representation in the sense of like, you have two things that are hard, right? Which is hard to recruit and it also becomes difficult. Uh, it's hard to retain as well. Now, you know, the thing that's, like, interesting, right, about this, right, is that if you think about, like, what is, you know, I think a lot of times, right, you know, it, it, it's in, like it's interesting that, like, equity is, like, not enough, right, or being responsive to the needs of other people really isn't enough, apparently, uh, so you have to, like, you know, a lot of times, right, agents, well, what's the benefit of doing this, right, instead of it just being, like, you know, you should do it because it's the right thing, oh, what's the benefit of it? Well, what ends up happening a lot, like, you know, if you have with uh, more female representation and more kind of stuff, right, is that a lot of these benefits are related to less use of force, which means there's also less brutality. Uh, you're more responsive to victims. of crime. Uh, there are fewer complaints against police. And if you have these fewer complaints against the police, right? You know, this has typically led to, you know, less, you know, discrimination. It's also, you know, also means from a police department standpoint, fewer settlements. And, you know, you have like this increase uh, with community um, relationships. So they're more positive. So the issue kind of becomes then is like if we know that these issues are going on and we know that there are real benefits to having more female police officers, right? How do we encourage that? And what are the, what are what are best ways and like practice to do that? You know that kind of thing, right? So we'll take a pause and then we'll uh, kind of talk about this in the next. Video.